Hi, I'm Ben Pearson, the Rosa Tracker, and today we're going to talk by popular request about getting satellites into multiple orbits with a single launch vehicle. And to start doing that, we're going to launch a couple of geo satellites. We're just going to put these in a roughly circular zero inclination orbit um, that's pretty high up there just to kind of get a sense for this. There's two different satellites that are in this test vehicle. We are launching from somewhere in Kerbal Space Program that is not along the equator because I wanted to show a little bit about how that will actually work. This is a little bit different than what you would do for a pure equatorial orbit. So, and because we don't have any equatorial launch sites that are on the equator here on Earth, then uh, we're just going to test this out and see how it goes. So let's go ahead and launch. So. This is a fairly powerful rocket. Um, we're going to go straight east, which is pretty much what they do for geosatellites. Ooh, it's a really pretty launch site. What we're going to do is something that's pretty close to what SpaceX will do during the regular burn. So what they'll do is they'll get the satellite into a low orbit, and then they will fire off here at a point where they're near the equator for a couple of reasons that we'll explain when we get there. So you can see we're launching from here quite far north. So we're just going to go ahead and hold on to the stage for a little bit and then release it. And we're going to straight burn horizontal until we get into an orbit here. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is even though I've been firing pretty close to 90 degrees, the orbital point is not so. Um, let's just go ahead and wait. Well, this will actually be good. So this point in time is roughly where we're crossing the equator. So we're actually going to wait until we do that. We're going to pretend we're in normal orbit. That's what you would do for most of these launches at this point in time. So let's go ahead and warp to here. Now, the reason why you do a burn at this particular point in the orbit, we'll just hit this on prograde, start burning, is you want the periapsis, the, or the apoasis, to be at a high point and you want it to be where it's crossing the equator so that way you can zero out your inclination. So I'm going to bring this to eh, most of the way to the moon, I think. Of course, the moon is a lot closer in this game than our moon is, but that's okay. Let's go right there. That seems pretty good. So at this point in time, we have our two satellites. We're going to go ahead and eject them. Uh, normally, you deploy one and then the other, but this is Kerbal Space Program. This is how we're going to do things. And at this point in time, we're going to wait until we get to here. Now, you'll notice that they're deployed into basically an identical orbit. Now, the reason why you want to do an inclination change here is because it's cheaper to do it this far out. You use a lot less fuel. Uh, looks like I didn't quite perfectly time things. Um, we're still well above the plane though, so we're going to go ahead and navigate to, or warp to here, which will be the adjustment point. If reality they do a little bit better than this, then we're going to set this to, I believe, normal. Anyways, we're going to go back to this map view and keep firing until we have achieved the right inclination. That's the first thing that you'll want to do. Now, this is a pretty weak engine. I probably should have chose something a little bit more powerful. I'm actually doing this totally wrong, too. Which is fine, because we have plenty of fuel. So you'll adjust the inclination so that it is roughly zero and then you're in the correct orbit and all will be well 
then the next phase that you'll have to do is to put it into the correct location. They will not do all of these burns at once. There we go, that's zero inclination. And now let's switch over to our other satellite. There we go. So now these still are in roughly the same orbit. They're gonna come back down. And the trick is, is we want to phase these so that they will be at different parts. Because when you have a geosatellite, then the key thing is what part of the globe is it over? And so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's just warp to our up oasis here. And then we're gonna fire a prograde orbit here. Uh, we're gonna say this one belongs, I don't know, say right where it is. So we're gonna fire until we are circular there we go that's pretty close to circular we'll call it good enough the other satellite that's here it needs to go to a different plane so let's go ahead and get to it we're going to prograde here and we want it to be just a little bit off so it will fire to raise the periapsis but it's going to time it so that the next time that it's here it's going to need to go to where it actually really belongs So then we're just gonna fire here and we'll get it circularized. And then we have two satellites that were launched with the same, same uh, satellite that have very, very different positioning here. For a geosatellite, this is very, very easy. And you can see we effectively have full coverage here. Now with LEO satellites, low earth orbiting satellites, it's a little bit different. And so let's, uh, Go ahead and continue here. For the sake of this program, we're going to launch these into a polar orbit, and I will meet with you back when we have our two satellites in a polar orbit. And we are back again with the same design of satellites that have been put this time into a low Kerbin orbit. Now, I put them into a polar orbit because many of the satellites that go around Earth go into a polar type of orbit, usually sun synchronous. The reason being is because it'll pass somewhere over the entire globe at some point in time. Um, one thing of particular note is these satellites tend to be a lot smaller, especially ones that are going to be a right here, so they won't have nearly as much thrust as these particular ones do. So I just want to show a inclination adjustment just to show what it would look like. So relatively small inclination changes, but it takes a very large amount of fuel. The reason why it takes so much fuel is because we are in a low orbit. Now I'm actually going to put this back here for reasons that we're going to explain here. But typically speaking, the most important thing to do if you're launching a spacecraft into an orbit, some kind of a rideshare type situation, is you want to be at the same inclination as all of the other payloads. Everything else you can correct with given time. So the first thing that we may want to do with these satellites is just phase them out so that they're not in exactly the same spot. And how you would do that is you just take one and you either raise or lower it. We're just going to raise this guy just a scooch. Um, that'll do. And then we're just going to stare at these guys with time. I'm going to put this at a fairly high warp rate. And you can see how they're drifting apart with time. And so eventually you can uh, get to the point where all of the satellites are where you want them to do. You can raise them to the same orbit and they will stop relative to each other and you'll have a plane of satellites. If you look at the Starlink satellites, this is what they're doing. They're in a kind of train of satellites and they'll slowly spread around with time. There's another thing with Kerbal Space Program that you can also do. Now this happens in real life, but it doesn't happen in Kerbal Space Program because 
the planets and moons are perfectly spherical, but in reality, the Earth is just a little bit less than perfect sphere. The distance from pole to pole of Earth is slightly less than it is from one side of the equator to the other side of the equator. And that's because of the rotation of the Earth. It tends to make things stick out a little bit towards the center, which is all perfectly well and good. The result of this is, is if you are in an orbit, over time it will tend to shift your orbit. And the closer you are to Earth, the more that this shift will occur. So if you raise, if you take these satellites and put them into a lower orbit, then with time it's going to shift into a different plane. So you can effectively have, you know, these satellites that are coming over the globe at this time of day, you can have another plane of satellites with the same inclination that's coming across this way and another one coming across here. Easiest way to think of this, with a sun-synchronous orbit, you're always over the globe at approximately the same time of day. So you can have a 6 p.m. orbit where it's over at 6 p.m. You can have a 3 p.m. where you're flying over the globe at 3 p.m. You also fly at 3 a.m and so on and so forth. So these are all with the same inclination, but they're different orbital planes. And that's how you can shift these with some time. Uh, you'll see that a lot of the Starlink satellites are heading to different planes, so they've been in orbit that they're kind of still roughly close together, but they are shifting their orbit, and it takes several months. It can take even a year if you're doing a very drastic one. Uh, a couple of months to do maybe a 20-ish degree plane change like that. But it's totally possible to do. You're just going to lose out on some of the ability to do that with a higher inclination. The other thing that you could do, and we're going to go ahead and do this, is you could have the same inclination but different orbits. And that is one common thing. It doesn't take a lot of fuel to pretty drastically change the orbit. And for some right share missions, they'll actually drop off a satellite and then they'll fire again and drop off another one. Uh, this is usually at the same inclination because doing inclination changes are really expensive. Um, but you'll drop it off at a different point like this. And with this, we're able to have a medium Earth and a low Earth orbiting satellite with the same launch that's a little bit better to do. The bottom line is, is there's some pretty neat tricks that you can do to get satellites at different parts depending on exactly what you want. Some satellite people, operators are a little bit less picky than others, so it really doesn't matter that much. Especially the students tend to be like this, but for those who are using more practical satellites, this kind of stuff can be extraordinarily useful. Let me know if you guys have any other questions and thank you for tuning in until next time. Keep on tracking. Take care guys.